Everything I know about this aspect of the game is based on what I've learned either through personal research or collected facts, respectively. Videos like this are made for fun. It may help somebody out there. Shown Show respect, respect, be aspired. Aspire. Shown discord, kill ire. The Goo Tooper is a weapon that's designed for extended use of the stored charge, the new mechanic given the certain charger type weapons. The Goo Tooper itself has mid range uncharged shots and gains a small boost in range when fully charged. The Goo Tooper, like many chargers, can splat an enemy in a single charge shot, which requires nearly a second and a half of setup to charge. With a Goo Tooper's stored charge, you can swim around while holding the trigger for up to 5 seconds before you lose it. Everyone can tell if this charger is holding a charge due to a glowing dot that appears on the user while in squid form. Compared to popular weapons that are familiar to players from Splatoon, the Goo Tuber itself has a niche role in springing sudden assaults with little to no warning. Due to the wide class of weapons that give even normal chargers trouble, the Goo Tuber has become a charger that relies on distractions, unpredictable shots, and sharp reflexes to land the best possible turf coverage and plays for its team. As a charger, the Goo Tuber suffers under pressure when dealing with stronger range or movement, so you will need to be aware of your surroundings and to know when to get out and when to get in. Now let's talk chargers. Chargers are known for firing a single bullet from where your laser is headed. It's not a cone or an explosive, but in most cases, your laser says where the ink that you're firing will go. Since each charger appears unique, it might help to brush up on play styles from other chargers to compare range, movement, and fire rates. For example, the Goo Tuber has the power to counter any charger in its range and line of sight. But until recent game updates, this wasn't practical because of how it was designed. The Goo Tuber has since then received reduced charge time, a reduction for the time it takes to come out of squid form with a stored charge, a few tweaks on how its shots create ink, and a rework that allows the Goo Tuber to hold a stored charge without fully charging. All of these changes have made the Goo Tuber a weapon based around speed while maintaining its deceptively slow nature. Combined with understanding how charges work, while it may not be a favorable pick for an up-close scuffle, it can at least hold its own with attuned mobility in the weapon kits that are available. For you number crunchers out there, this is where the guy doesn't tell you how to play the game. But you might want help with more than just the main weapon. The Goo Tuber in this video has suction bombs and splashdown. You can play with this kit at level 22. What tends to put players off from using this thing is that the Goo Tuber appears helpless if they try to hold sniper positions alone or push anywhere towards the middle of the map. If you're facing a team with raw aggression or a solid defense, you'll have to play calm and slow since this charger isn't the best thing to use at point blank or against a show off. As long as your enemies respect your ability to trap their feet, tap shot them to death, or sock them with a sudden store charge, the rest will take care of itself. Suction bombs for its charger is good for shaking off your suit making harder space for a teammate's feet, making nasty traps based on your observations, and more importantly, personal combo. Splashdown can ambush or repel most players, and work well with suction bombs, since both of these types of explosives deal high damage when least expected. But if 
you figure to come to it. Focus everyone and everything down with uncharged shots using your own charger technique. You don't have to spray and pray in a bad spot. So don't pull the enemy's hand. As for combining your YouTuber skills with things that might not belong to you, like someone's inkjet, curly bomb, or a point of interest that forces eyes off of you, use these things as decoys to set someone up for your best plays. Something like a splat brother, another charger, or even a stubborn player who can die is a huge nuisance for someone trying to take you off. So watch their backs if the pressure is too much for them, so you can expand your options. Even if it's turf war, your weapons kit should still have some kind of forethought for what kind of abilities you might choose based on your playstyle. In my case, I love running as little run speed as possible for most weapons I use, greats, other players who can track and aim, and my own platformer skill are my concerns, but I'm just an example. You might use Ink Recovery or something like Ink Saber Main to either pressure a player or move to somewhere on the map in a hurry. Come back, opening gambit, or something like ink resistance will help you maintain a presence with the goo tuber for however long you think you'll need it. Something like ninja squid, respawn punisher, or object shredder are a little niche for a charger, but those things can make the difference when used for its niche and not as a pivot. Regardless if you plan to use this personal guide for fun or for glory, remember this, plan ahead, remain focused, don't tunnel your vision for a single shot, watch everyone's movements carefully, and for the good to remain, and you might know what I mean when I say this, make every single player who doesn't take you seriously get themselves splendid. Anyway, this is Sable Shade, and if you know me, I'll be around.